Tesla is moving swiftly to bring its new 4680 battery cell into mass production. Elon Musk has stated that the company is working towards its 100 gigawatt hour goal, producing its own cells, and it expects to achieve this by the end of 2022 in about a year's time. However, even while Tesla is trying to bring up its own battery lines, the company is happily buying up batteries from many other suppliers around the world and has made it known that every battery that they produce, Tesla will be purchasing. And they've even called upon their suppliers to drastically boost battery output and in many cases having them double production as the insatiable demand for electric car batteries continues. Now one of Tesla's biggest competitors in the China market is a company called BYD, which has long been backed by Warren Buffett. BYD makes an iron-based battery called the Blade Battery, which is said to be state-of-the-art and a highly competitive product. Though back in August, it was rumored that BYD may become a battery supplier for Tesla, but it was later reported that BYD denied these rumors. Yet once again in October of this year, new rumors have resurfaced from unofficial sources. According to local media website CLS.CN, BYD has received 10 gigawatt hours in orders of iron-based blade batteries from Tesla. Meanwhile, Elon Musk has recently reiterated that medium-range vehicles and stationary storage, which will make up the vast majority of vehicles and storage systems in the future, will be using iron-based batteries, which also happens to be the core material used in the BYD blade battery. Furthermore, during Tesla's Battery Day presentation last year, Tesla showcased its diversified cathode approach, which allows it to use various cathode materials to create 4680 cells, with iron-based cells being targeted at long cycle life applications. So let's have a look at what BYD is bringing to the table with its blade battery and how it stacks up against its competition, including Tesla's 4680 cell. BYD's automotive division was founded in 2003 when the company acquired another Chinese automotive firm and gained the required licensing to build production passenger cars. In 2008, the company introduced the BYD F3, which was actually the world's first mass-produced plug-in hybrid vehicle. In that same year, billionaire investor Warren Buffett took a $230 million stake in the company. Today, BYD produces cars, buses, trucks, forklifts, sky rails, and large-scale battery systems. In the recent month of October 2021, BYD sold 80,000 NEVs, or new energy vehicles. However, these are not all EVs, as they include hybrids and plug-in cars. Battery electric vehicles, or BEVs, are fully electric, which make up a subset of this number, and total to over 41,000 units in October. This makes them a formidable player compared to Tesla, which sold 54,000 made in China Model 3s and Model Ys in the same month of October. It's impressive that Tesla's China-based gigafactory Shanghai only started production less than two years ago, delivering its first made in China Model 3s near the beginning of 2020 and its first Model Y vehicles in 2021, showing how fast Tesla can move and that their gigafactory strategy is a force to be reckoned with. While BYD produces a wide range of vehicles, including ICE cars, plug-in hybrids, and fully electric, they've also made inroads in battery storage systems and have innovated on the battery cell itself. BYD unveiled their new blade battery in early 2020, which uses a lithium iron phosphate or LFP chemistry and a cell-to-pack approach. Typically, battery packs contain modules and then contain the battery cells so that if something goes wrong with a module, which is a grouping of batteries within the pack, the module can be replaced. However, the entire battery pack is usually sealed with adhesives, which makes the individual modules difficult to replace anyways, and so modules are being phased out of battery packs, which will free up more space. This is known as cell-to-pack technology. The blade batteries use this and are arranged into an array and inserted into the battery pack. Because of optimizations that BYD has made, the space utilization is about 50% higher than conventional lithium iron phosphate packs that use modules. One of the main purposes of creating the blade battery was to mitigate concerns over battery safety in electric vehicles. During its 2020 product launch, BYD demoed a nail piercing test on an NCM or nickel manganese cobalt battery, which is a lithium iron battery typically used in EVs. 
In BYD's demo, they placed a raw egg on the surface of the battery as a reference point to give a more practical idea as to what would happen if the battery was pierced. In the first case with the NCM battery, once the nail punctured it, the battery immediately expanded and began emitting hot gas while subsequently exploding and lighting on fire with the egg launch across the room. The battery temperature reached over 500 degrees Celsius as it burned. In the second case, BYD ran the test on a conventional lithium iron phosphate battery containing the same core materials which are used in the blade battery but utilized by the rest of the industry. In this case, the LFP battery also emitted hot gas which caused parts of the egg to burn as the temperature rose to over 200 degrees Celsius. And finally, the test was performed on the BYD blade battery itself, which had absolutely no visual effect and the egg did not even get cooked, with the temperature rising just over 30 degrees Celsius. BYD has also tested their batteries by crushing them, heating them to 300 degrees Celsius, and overcharging them by three and a half times their capacity just to make sure that they would not catch fire in other extreme scenarios. This explains why certain types of batteries require more shielding to protect against road debris piercing through the battery pack, and also to separate the battery cells from each other so that they don't create a chain reaction and cause the entire battery pack to spontaneously catch fire. But due to the blade battery's impressive characteristics, much of this extra shielding is likely not required in vehicles containing these types of batteries. This is an important advantage of the blade battery since metal shielding has extra cost, space, and weight constraints associated with it. And so not just the battery itself can be made more cheaply with higher volumetric energy density, but also the vehicle can be made more cheaply and of higher range for an LFP battery with better efficiency. Some of the properties of the blade battery which prevent it from exploding include very high temperature conditions in order to get the battery to cause a reaction. And even in such a case, the battery releases heat slowly and generates very low heat to begin with. And also, very importantly, it doesn't release oxygen as it breaks down, which is the key ingredient for burning something or fueling a fire. BYD has stated, it is due to this unpractical focus on energy density that safety has been sidelined from power battery development. BYD's blade battery aims to bring battery safety back to the forefront a redirection from the industry's focus on this crucial aspect. And so the company has decided to focus on safety rather than pursue high range applications which has led to this type of invention. Now just as BYD traded up for a higher quality asset, now you can as well. With inflation at a 30 year high, diversifying your portfolio with alternative assets is more important than ever. That's why today's sponsor is Masterworks.io, a platform that lets you invest in art a rarely talked about asset class that has proven to be a great hedge against inflation with studies showing very low correlation to the stock market. Contemporary art historically averages a 23% real return when inflation is above 3% like it is right now. That's more than four times better than traditional hedges like gold and real estate. Now traditionally, only the super wealthy have been able to invest in multi-million dollar artwork, that is until now. Masterworks is a revolutionary tech platform valued at over a billion dollars that allows you to purchase shares of multi-million dollar paintings by world famous artists like Banksy, Picasso or Monet in the same way you would buy Tesla or Apple shares. After investing in a work of art, one option is to wait for it to be sold. But what I found interesting is that Masterworks also offers a secondary market where you can trade shares directly with other investors. For example, as a conservative investor, I was looking to invest in one of the most stable artists on the platform. I decided on Picasso's Homme Assis, as Picasso has an annual appreciation of 12% a year and often leads the art market in yearly auction sales volume. As this fits my risk return profile, I simply select the amount of shares I would like to own and invest. This really is a brilliant platform that is opening the high-end art market to everyone through trust and transparency. It's no wonder over 250,000 investors have signed up. But as a result of this high demand, there is a long wait list for those who want to invest. However, I've partnered with Masterworks to provide you with a link to let you skip that wait list, which can be found in the description below. And thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Now BYD states that their battery solutions contain no heavy metals or toxic chemicals, making them environmentally friendly. They also claim an astounding 70% remaining capacity after 10,000 charging cycles. 
even current NMC and NCA batteries, which have a much lower life cycle, closer to 1500 or 2000 cycles before degrading to 80% of their original capacity, are capable of running vehicles for hundreds of thousands of miles. As mentioned, high cycle life is a strong property of LFP batteries, and if placed into a vehicle, this would easily exceed a million miles, or multiple vehicle lifetimes. BYD also states that its batteries still have excellent performance even at minus 40 degrees up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. Not all FP batteries are created equal because typical LFP batteries tend to be much better at high temperatures but worse at lower temperatures. However, BYD has a wide temperature band of high performance. This could also boost vehicle efficiency since car batteries typically need to be heated or cooled in order to get to optimal temperatures for usability. If the batteries operate well at a wide range of temperatures, then less heating or cooling is required, saving energy. LFP batteries have a big advantage of costing 20 to 30% less per kilowatt hour than NMC batteries. They make use of materials such as iron, which is highly abundant compared to the nickel used in other types of EV batteries. They also don't use cobalt, an expensive material that must be sourced responsibly. LFP batteries typically suffer in terms of energy density, and they can really only be used in vehicles where the vehicle itself is extremely efficient, the motors, the HVAC system, etc. Otherwise, range would be severely limited, and it wouldn't be feasible to use these low-range yet low-cost batteries. This is the reason why LFP batteries have not been used heavily in electric vehicles before as compared to NMC and NCA chemistries and are only becoming more popular now. There are only a few players able to use LFP batteries for cars, including Tesla and BYD. And by the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years and it's all freely available. BYD's Han EV, their flagship model, is equipped with blade batteries. It's said to have a 0 to 100 km per hour acceleration of 3.9 seconds. It also has a range of 605 km per the NEDC standard. This is roughly 423 km if converted to the EPA standard, which is closer to being equivalent to 264 miles of range. The Han EV also uses a 76.9 kWh battery pack. For comparison, Tesla's Made in China Model 3 uses LFP batteries produced by CATL, the largest battery manufacturer in China. Tesla's battery pack is smaller than BYD's at just 55 kWh with 52.5 usable capacity. It has a 0 to 100 km per hour acceleration of 5.6 seconds and a range of 508 km using the NEDC standard and 350 km of EPA range. Tesla's China-made Model 3 vehicle, in terms of range and battery size, is still more efficient than BYD's, however BYD has come a long way. In the past, Elon Musk wasn't so keen about BYD's designs. And yeah. as you're familiar with, BYD, which is also on the West Coast, I think they're ramping up production of their electric vehicles. Uh, Warren Buffett owns 10% stake in that. Uh, why do you laugh? BYD is trying to compete. Why do you laugh? Have you seen their car? I have seen their car, yes. In fact, at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, I saw their cars. Yeah. Well, they are on a different... They are on a diff Tell me why you're laughing. Um, you don't see them at all as a competitor? No. Why is that? I mean, they offer a lower price point. I, I, don't th I don't think they have a great product. Why is that? Um, I, I don't think it's, it's particularly attractive. The technology is, is not very strong. Um, and, and BYD as a company has pretty severe problems in their home turf in China. Right. Uh, so I, I think they, th their focus is and rightly should be on making sure they don't die in China. Okay. But now BYD's vehicles are quite impressive. One reason being that their LFP blade batteries are more efficient than the CATL LFP batteries that Tesla is sourcing in China. According to Push EVs, the average price of an LFP battery with modules is 85 euros per kilowatt hour. CATL, which supplies Tesla, has gotten it down to 75 euros, while BYD has a significant cost advantage that's 27% cheaper than CATL at 55 euros. 
Even with a lower cost, BYD also brings a higher energy density of 166 watt hours per kilogram, while CATL is said to be at 126 watt hours per kilogram. That's 31% more energy dense. And in layman terms, it allows the vehicle to weigh less while holding more energy. So technically, Tesla's made in China Model 3 is at a large disadvantage in terms of cost and range, and yet it's still extremely efficient even with the CATL battery. If Tesla was able to get battery sourced from BYD or build their own high energy density LFP batteries, their made in China Model 3 could get a major boost in specs and efficiency. Tesla is working on their own 4680 battery cells, which according to their diversified cathode approach, would allow them to tailor their new production lines to various types of battery chemistries, including LFP batteries, which Tesla expects to use for the majority of its high volume vehicles and battery solutions. The benefit of the 4680 battery cell allow for a 56% reduction in dollar cost per kilowatt hour. This is likely relative to their 2170 cells that are used in the current US made Model Y and Model 3 vehicles. However, the China made vehicles which use the CATL prismatic LFP batteries currently don't make use of Tesla's advancements in anode and cathode material, their structural battery pack, battery factory efficiencies, and the new form factor. Therefore, there could still be plenty of opportunity for improvement. Tesla is also forecasting a 54% range increase with its 4680 cell enhancements, and even LFP vehicles will have room to benefit from Tesla's new designs. Tesla is sticking with cylindrical cells, and one reason why this may be is because cylindrical cells are said to be much faster to produce. Speed of cell production is extremely important as it reduces cost as the company hits larger scales. A single factory producing more batteries will have lower fixed costs per battery and thus be able to reduce the battery price. Tesla outlined its drastically reduced factory investments at Battery Day. But as per Wright's law, popularized by investment firm ARK Invest, as production doubles, costs fall by a certain percentage simply by increasing scale, which could give Tesla a major advantage and the rest of the industry, including BYD, further cost savings. However, if Tesla can boost battery production to hundreds of gigawatt hours faster than other players, they may benefit the most due to Wright's law and economies of scale. As ARK Invest Sam Chorus notes, cumulative LFP battery production appears to be where nickel-based production was in 2016. As previously mentioned, LFP batteries weren't very feasible for electric cars until now, where vehicle efficiency has allowed for these types of batteries to now be used. Therefore, LFP batteries are coming off a smaller base, making it easier to double cumulative production. Sam Corris says that if LFP ramps the same way the battery industry did over the past five years, it would suggest an LFP price of $41 per kilowatt hour. That would be much lower than even BYD's estimated cost of 55 euros or $63 per kilowatt hour. At the same time, it's possible that the battery ramp will actually be much faster this time than over the past five years because Tesla is planning its own 100 gigawatt hour capacity by next year and three terawatt hours by 2030. This has never been done before and would eclipse not only what Tesla has done in the past, but the entire LFP battery industry. Given that Elon Musk expects that the LFP will become the most heavily used type of battery going forward and a large percentage of new batteries will likely be using LFP, the ramp up could be faster than any other battery type has seen before. This could be a profound move for lowering LFP battery cost much further. Sam Corris notes that for every doubling in cumulative LFP production, battery costs fall by about 28%. And so for Tesla's 4680, not only ramp up speed, but getting to a very high scale as quickly as possible will be very important for reducing battery cost. Tesla is also working on other cathode types for its higher energy density applications such as Cybertruck and Semi. These cells could have an energy density of over 300 watt hours per kilogram, which shows that even BYD's impressive 166 watt hours per kilogram for the Blade battery is still low given that it's using the LFP chemistry. But cost is a key factor, especially since the medium range vehicles will only hit a large market if they're affordable. At a much lower cost with higher efficiency using the 4680 cells, Tesla can put in just enough LFP battery cells 
to have good range, longevity, and safety characteristics to build a very compelling iron-based EV for the true mass market. So it's possible that Tesla's version of the LFP4680 could have increased properties throughout that rival BYD's blade battery given Tesla's new anode and cathode processes. But we have yet to see the real-world safety and performance stats and how they compare since the 4680 batteries are not yet in wide-scale production. Tesla is also using a structural battery pack which BYD's cell-to-pack architecture may support even though BYD doesn't use this design or gigapresses to form giant castings necessary for this change. Tesla's big advantage is that it's able to truly unify the battery cells with the structure of the vehicle to greatly reduce costs and have all of the components work together to create synergies and boost efficiency. Nonetheless, Tesla is calling for massive growth and has told suppliers that it's willing to buy every battery they make while asking them to greatly boost production. Tesla already has battery supply deals with the largest battery manufacturers in the world, CATL, Panasonic, and LG Chem. Tesla's Shanghai factory alone is using at least 30 gigawatt hours per year at this run rate in order to build over 50,000 medium range vehicles each month. But as production continues to increase, Tesla has a limitless demand for more batteries. There's no reason why they wouldn't be looking to source batteries from even more suppliers such as BYD, especially given the strides that BYD has made in prismatic LFP battery technology. According to CN.CLS through CNEV post, BYD reportedly has multiple insider sources saying that the company plans to supply Tesla with blade batteries starting in the second quarter of 2022, and that Tesla was already in the testing phase. While this is still just a rumor, Elon Musk has posted a few memes in the past saying that he's studying the blade. He's been known to post cryptic memes with double meanings, and so perhaps he was studying the BYD blade batteries last year. His meme posted on April 2020 was less than two weeks after BYD did its blade battery nail piercing presentation. It does seem to be a bit counterintuitive, however, that BYD would become a supplier of Tesla given that it's one of the few companies that makes its own batteries and cars. They continue to grow production of their own vehicles, and so it would make sense that they would also need all of these batteries that they can get for their own products. According to the October rumors, however, they have received 10 gigawatt hours of blade battery orders from Tesla, so in about six months, it's possible that we'll get more color on the legitimacy of this news, and when Tesla's 4680 batteries start hitting the road early next year from Giga Berlin and Giga Texas, we'll finally get to see how they truly stack up against BYD's Blade batteries. So do you think Tesla is in fact ordering Blade batteries from BYD? And let me know in the comments if you think that Tesla's 4680 cells will bring something new to the world of LFP to compete with the Blade batteries. Be sure to watch our previous battery video on the economics of the 4680 cells. Don't forget to check out our Masterwork sponsor link in the description below. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.